So we can go back to the central dogma, which is the green at the center. And now we add McClintock's feedback loop. And we add the Monod, Changeau, Jacob should be added there. Uh, all of those folks with protein to DNA positive feedback loops. And that is, of course, in their case, a positive feedback loop. So there were two major feedback loops that invalidate the central dogma of molecular biology. Just for completeness, because you already saw Farrell already referred to this. This is another major feedback loop, and we haven't dis have not discussed it yet, and it's going to be our next topic. So this is a sort of introduction to the next chapter. Here's a very pretty paper that was in Science 15 years ago. <clears throat> uh, HES1 is a super important uh, binding, pro notch binding protein, which is very important in laying out the body plan in embryogenesis. And these folks looked at it and they saw a very interesting thing, which is that it oscillates over time. Gene expression oscillates with a two-hour period, and you will notice that it's going up and down by a factor of four. Now, in a lot, of, a lot of labs, if you have gene expression went up by a factor of four, you start writing the paper. That's considered a, a major, major increase in gene expression. But what these folks are saying is that happens every two hours on its own. And this is an oscillation in gene expression. So what could possibly cause an oscillatory gene expression? We have been talking about a bistable gene expression produced by a positive feedback loop. What produces oscillatory responses? And the short answer is a negative feedback loop. And that's going to be our next topic. And by way of introduction, this is the abstract from their paper. And you will notice that they're saying, first of all, it oscillates with a two-hour cycle. And it is caused by negative autoregulation, or to put it another way, a negative feedback loop. That's going to be something that we are going to be talking about a lot. Here is their model. Um, there's another major case of oscillatory gene expression, which we will also be talking about, which is the gene P53. Very interesting paper uh, from the group at Systems Biology at Harvard Medical School. They took this gene and they took another product, which is activated by the gene and then feeds back negatively on the gene. And they just watched it over time. And what they saw, just like shark tuna, the two oscillated with the green, P53, always leading the pink. The green leads the pink. The green leads the pink. It's like the green is the tuna and the pink is the sharks. And that's not a bad metaphor here. And what they found was, when they looked at it over time, a two to three hour period, green, red, green, red, was clearly seen as a pattern of gene expression. In fact, negative feedback and oscillations were the subject of the Nobel Prize in 2017. Hall, Rosbash, and Young, these are their words. Notice that they say oscillations are achieved by delaying various steps in the network. And what they show is, is that these two genes produce gene products which come back 
and inhibit the genes that were producing the products. And what we're going to learn in the next unit is that that kind of negative feedback, especially in the presence of time delays, that negative feedback can produce an oscillatory response. And in this case, the oscillatory response that is produced is the circadian rhythm, the 24-hour rhythm of the body. So we will talk about that as we begin to talk about oscillation. But for now, I want to leave this picture in your head. And I hope you stare at this and replace the central dogma with this better approximation in which DNA goes to RNA, goes to protein, but then protein has positive feedback on DNA, RNA has reverse transcriptase on DNA, and protein feeds back onto DNA. And this is, of course, a negative feedback loop. So the present, in the presence of these feedback loops, now, obviously, it doesn't really matter which way we hold the page. There's no chain of command from DNA to RNA to protein because protein is giving orders to DNA.